Hello! Today I'm going to be talking about video editing, specifically one called Videoproc Vlogger from a company called DigiArty. Now, you would have probably seen, hopefully, there's like a little box that jumped up saying paid promotional product. So this is um, a, a sponsored review. They've paid me to make this video. But to explain what happened and why I took this on, they contacted me and said, would you like to make a video about our free video editing software? We think it would be really good for people editing drone videos. So I took a look at it, I downloaded it, I had a play around and I thought, you know, this is this is pretty good. I think this, this might fill a gap for a few people. To explain where I'm coming from, I'm on a Mac which puts me in a sort of a, a small box and others. So I started off um, with something that Apple give for free, which is called iMovie. It's a very basic editor, but it's very easy to use and it's very integrated into the operating system. So it's very easy to like drag music, drag clips, Put little transitions in but if you want to get more complicated um, it, it's it's no good for that and that's why I had to move up to um, something called Final Cut Pro X which you may have heard of it's quite a famous uh, video editor it's used a lot in the industry it's very expensive fortunately I, I sort of hid that cost from myself when I bought a brand new iMac which is very expensive so the several hundred pounds to buy the video editor didn't matter as much um, so where does a uh, vlogger fit in this somewhere in the middle. It can do much more complicated things than something like iMovie, um, but can't do the sort of stuff I'm after with Final Cut Pro X. And this is kind of interesting because there's some really incredible free packages um, out there, most famously uh, DaVinci Resolve, which I had a quick look at. But I think some of the problems with the, the really incredible packages like Final Cut Pro X uh, DaVinci Resolve is they have a learning curve and if you don't use them regularly sometimes you have to come back and relearn everything. So a, a good thing about Vlogger is it kind of sits in this space where it's pretty easy to pick up and you shouldn't forget everything but it can do more complicated um, things than your, your more basic package and that's why I thought it might be interesting and useful for people that are kind of a little bit intimidated by the idea of like putting edits together and, and you know making their videos into something. So I thought I'd go through a few things I would typically do with some of my videos, um, along with some things I think might be interesting for you guys just starting out. To say, look, you know, it's it's not that bad. Do this and, you know, you make your videos more snappy and stuff. So let's jump right in and I'll show you a couple of bits. I'll get some footage down and uh, we'll do some editing and uh, see where we get. Okay, here we are on screen capture, and this is where you'd, you'd get it, and uh, as it says, it's free. And I did ask them about it, I said, look, what's the catch? Nothing's nothing's free, it costs a huge amount of money to develop software like this. What's in it for you? Are there micropayments, are there some things held back and stuff like that? And they said, no, it's free, it will forever be free. The idea is that we hope people like it, and you know, we've got other chargeable products, which like video converter and things like that, so we hope they'll come back to us. So. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a catch, um, so certainly try out what have you got to lose. Um, and this is what you get. Once you open the program, it will come up. First time, it, it'll go through and see what sort of hardware you got and see what sort of support you've got for doing hardware rendering and stuff like that. After which point, you've come in and you have like uh, a, your product you've got, which that's my little test one. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically make a 4K video. You've got a load of drop downs here for typical like 1080p, 2K, 4Ks. Um, then you've got specifics for, oh, if you want to make this for an iPad resolution, for example, or an iPhone resolution, stuff like that. So I'm going to do this in 4K uh, at 60 frames a second. I have to say that the, the footage I'm using will be a mix of 4K, 1080p, and even some DVR. So let's call this our epic drone edit because, you know, obviously it's going to be edit and epic. And uh, we'll go ahead and make that new project. And starting out, here's what you got. Uh, you've got where your, your basic footage will, will show you what's happening and then you've got your timeline here. Just, just to show you a sort of typical thing of what a video editor looks like. Here's, here's my Final Cut Pro X and this is my recent uh, Run Cam 2 and you know you, you've got lots of different bits of footage there and like you know overlaying footage and titles and that sort of thing and effects. All that sort of stuff goes on essentially. Uh, and this is kind of what we've got here. We've got a main video track, overlay track, effects tracks, audio, subtitles, um, the works. But let's go and get some footage. 
what I did, I stuck everything in a folder and what you can do is you can add individual files to the media library or as I've got it all in a folder, um, it's literally here called stuff to edit and if I select that you'll see it basically populate our media library here and, and it will recognize uh, still pictures and music as well so you can drag what you like in. And where I thought I'd start is um, I, I watched you know, a lot of people's videos and when you, they don't edit them you can really tell. So an example of this, if we drag a DVR in, one of the first things you'd see in the DVR is someone's stupid face looking in the camera and saying is this on? So you know the first thing I want to do is say you know it's really easy to, to edit this either you go up to where you want to you do your start point and you'd say something like I, I'm gonna split the clip there and I'm gonna press delete and then we're straight straight into it at least uh, and another thing is when I watch DVRs is like this probably won't play back so well because I'm using the microphone but yeah you get a huge amount of um, noise of these so another really quick and easy thing to do is just to go along this is what's called the inspector pane here so this is this is your playback this is your media and this is your inspector and this is going to change depending what sort of stuff you're doing so with this we can go ahead and we can say you know mute our, our sound completely or perhaps if we just want to hear a bit of it and so if we move that down a little bit we can just hear a little bit of that and it's like oh you can tell what's going on with the motors but it's not, you know, too bad. We we can we can get through that. But we don't really want to look at that DVR. So let's bring in something um, uh, a bit more interesting. Uh, and we'll we'll get some 4K footage here. So this is one of the bits, and let's put it with another bit there. And this could in fact be uh, like winter to summer. So let's move that bit over there and it's it's very easy to move things about. Now as I said the real basics of editing is just changing these endpoints here. So it's like all I have to do is, is squeeze away some of that and it's gone. I can move stuff around here and get rid of some of that and it's gone and then it's kind of like okay so what, what do we want here? If we sort of scrub through this it's like yep yeah, I like that and then I want to go to something else so why don't we split that clip there and then we can remove that piece of footage and then we can go over to this more interesting piece of footage here. So if I just play that back I'm just hitting space as a sort of quick command you can see that it just goes and then goes to the next clip. Which brings us on to transitions. Really easy thing to, to work in this thing and the most basic of one you might use is this fade transition. If you just drag that down into there and we just play through that again we get a nice little fade through onto something else. And you might also want to use this sort of thing in your first bit. It's like, well, we don't just want to go straight into it. If I grab myself a little fade and pop it there, then as soon as we play this clip, it fades up nicely. And similarly, let's just, um, let's say we're going to stop the clip there, delete that bit, and maybe we want to do a fade to black here. So when we go ahead and we finish playing this bit it's gonna do a nice little fade out and that that is the real basics of editing because all you have to do then is arrange the bits of footage you want to in a line you'll decide to um, you know edit them as you like and take different bits out here and there and it's like oh, where are we going from here let's let's then go to that bit and I could I could do two things I could do that you'll notice as I go to it it just stops on where I was there so that's that's really handy that's a, a little thing uh, where it jumps to your position here so you're like oh I want to go from here so I could I click on split or I could just grab that and I could just take that to there and then we're straight into this bit so again we can just play that back and we go from there and that's gonna actually fade to black <laughs> and fade up again to here and transition wise there's absolutely stacks of them you can you can try them all out there's um quite good fun ones you can even do sort of classic star wars transitions there like the the wipes and you get the sort of side wipe though it's more of a diagonal up isn't it one of the ones i liked let's just get rid of this footage quickly 
is I thought for DVR this this is a, a nice one if we get some let's get some DVR here and let's get where are we here so we're flying here let me uh, get rid of this clip and then let's say we're gonna have how much we're gonna have we'll have a couple of seconds of this flying and then we're gonna do a split there to get rid of that one and then we're gonna bring in some different DVR footage here and then we're gonna get to the bit where we're actually flying I was probably waiting for a satellite lock here there we go and we'll do another split there and I'm gonna get rid of that like so and then I'm gonna I don't want it quite this long so I'm just gonna bring that down you know this is a really quiet DVR this one's really noisy so let's get rid of that uh, volume there and then what I kind of liked because at the moment if we play this it just goes from one DVR to the other I found out I thought they had a really cool transition for doing DVR stuff um, and it's called uh, glitch displacement and it kind of looks a bit like video noise and what you do with it is uh, if we go to here and play we'll sort of buzzed and go through and again this is all context sensitive so if I click on that I get a bunch of things to do with the clip if I click on the transition it, it shows me bits I can do with the transition at the moment that transition is kind of long at three seconds if I change that to a second and apply that then what will happen is is when we do the transition it would be like a, a really quick buzz over almost like uh, we've gone through static into something else so that's that's transitions for you so even just doing that general bit about arranging the clips will go a long way to you know getting rid of any duff stuff you've got or you know cleaning up the bits you don't want there or looking up your nose as you're trying to get the camera but I put the question out to some of my Patreon supporters about what sort of things would they like to see in video editing what what things they need to do and one of them talked about being able to blur details of their screen quite often if you're flying with a GPS on beta flight you might have your coordinates there but you might want to reveal those coordinates because you know that's personal to where you live or you don't want people knowing about your secret flying site on this I've already got my GPS coordinates covered up I don't I don't have them there on this particular OSD but I thought what I could do is I could show you how to blur for example how far you're going maybe you don't want people to know how far you're away from yourself uh, and this is easily done in the effects what we have here we have an effect track and when we use one of these effects it'll appear in in here and with all these things we can have multiple tracks so if I can just press uh, the plus sign it will give me more and more effect tracks so I could just overlay those on top of one another similarly I can get rid of them the only exception is if you go to video track and you hit plus it'll always appear as an overlay track so it's like one main video track and all the other video tracks will be overlaid on on top of that but we don't need any at the moment so let's get rid of that anyway one I felt was really useful for this one was one called uh, pixel art if we grab this I'm just gonna move that over there and I'll show you why because if I just bring this down here you can see how the little the green line will appear to say oh you want to put it there do you and similarly if I just take that and drag it again it it will just anchor to that other end now instantly you will notice that what we get is the entire thing pixelated we we don't want that obviously I mean it's great for showing no detail at all but that's not what we want if we go ahead and click on pixel art then this menu here becomes context sensitive to that so what we can do then is we can change the height of the pixels we can change the, the width of what's going to take and then what we can do is move the X and Y coordinates and we can kind of see how big it is there so it doesn't need to be quite that big move the X over move it up the screen and we are at this point covering ourselves up nicely and if we press play you can see you know there's no chance of being able to read this and uh, you can change it so you can read it or it's literally nothing and I think it's nice to kind of hint at what's going on something like 12 and that uh, that gets you a nice little bit of pixelation so there's nothing you can read there 
Now, another common thing, while we're on DVRs, is some people will like to put the DVR footage over the top of their HD footage. Now, I suddenly realised that I don't have the exact same HD and um, DVR footage, but what I can do is grab some sort of generic uh, HD footage. Here's another bit to take out, <laughs> me looking at it. This is uh, filmed with a GoPro, I think we're at 1080p here. And let me just get to the main flying thing. Uh, so this isn't going to sync up completely because I haven't got the same footage, but I think you get the gist of it. I'm going to turn that volume down so we don't have to listen to it. And I'm going to get some random DVR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this on the overlay track. Um, and obviously, you know, let's first get to the point where it's actually flying even if it doesn't uh, properly uh, line up it's at least you know two of us flying so let's bring this bit down to there so it's in the same spot and you will see we've got a little window there obviously this is this is not many people stick it in the middle they generally stick it on one of the corners so again if we click on our DVR footage what we're going to do is scroll on down and we're going to change the scale like so and then we're going to change the position basically how this works is 0 0.5 is in the middle and if you would go to 1 that puts you all the way over on, on the end so you can just sort of essentially if we start at like 1 1 or in this case 0 is at the bottom and we just sort of pick it up from there try and overlay it just so it's in the right place and with this sort of thing you might get into the habit of putting DVR footage there and it'd be the case of okay I know if my scale is 0 0.16 then I need to position X at 0 0.831 and, and Y at 0 0.202 and, and then what we've got there is an overlay of DVR footage over your HD feed. Ignore the fact that this isn't the same flight, it's it's just the idea of how you do it. Um, and what else you might want to do is if you know you want to see mainly your HD footage, is you could always go ahead and say let's set the opacity down a bit, and then what we can do is we can actually see most of our HD footage under there so we can see what's going on yet we can still read our DVR if that's sort of thing we want to which I think is a pretty popular thing to do when you're watching your FPV videos and stuff so another thing that's quite popular in uh, drone videos is a speed ramping and it might be the case that instead of just simply cutting stuff out like you want to show for example in this clip I've gone all the way over to here and I've come all the way back again but that takes like you know a couple of minutes and we don't want to seal that in great detail so rather than that you'd think okay so I took off here and I started flying so maybe I'll take a split there and then I flew over to there and I turned around and then I came back and I started going about normal from there so you know I kind of want to show that bit but not have to show all of it just you know the the exciting bits if you like so if I did that clicked on this one which is the flying and then went to speed this is where you can do speed ramping um, and it defaults to custom and you've got all these sort of uh, different uh, setting ones and I thought for this sort of thing where you want to sort of show it fast and then slow and then go again something like bullet works quite well and what you've got here is a bunch of busier curves you can change and if we were to play this it would say okay this is what's going to happen I'm going to show it going really fast and then as we get to the point you want to here, I'm going to slow it down and it gets a little bit too slow there. But essentially, yeah, it sort of, that's your base. It's sort of, I'm going real time here because I've showed how fast you've got there or how far you've got. And then I'm going to fly back fast again. That's not quite working for me, but the general gist of it's not too bad. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to show the slow bit about here. So if I move that to there, and then I kind of want to speed up again after about there. So I'm not, I'm not going to slow down for long, and I don't want it being like half speed. You can see here the speed scale. So I'm going to bring that part up, and 
curve right and bring that part up. So what we get there is a little little bit of a curve there and then I'm going to bring this bit a bit closer because I want a, a sort of more dramatic slowdown there and I want it to speed up a lot quicker. I literally just want to show this bit and then say okay get off of it and I, I'll sort of get the curve I want. So if we try that now from about there what we got is fast 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 look at us fly look how far we've gone we bring it down we slow it for the turn to say what we've done and then we go ahead and we speed it back up again to do the ramping that way and we can go ahead and apply that or if we didn't want any of that uh, obviously there's there's other templates you can use but we could also go ahead and manually move these ourselves so it's like oh, we want it to go fast there I want it to go super slow there and we want to change the curve really weird I mean you wouldn't do this but you do that and then you say I might want to add a point here and you know we're going to come up with the weirdest stuff ever if we do stuff like that but that's what you do but you would have to remember also to do the apply else it doesn't it doesn't go on your timeline otherwise uh, so if we go back to bullet where I was it was something like and then we apply that goes into our clip as you see that clips uh, got a lot smaller than it was and uh, we're good to go on our speed ramp obviously you can also just uh, have a constant speed if you wanted to just speed it up or slow it down you've got options there as well now another question that came up from my patron supporters was about LUTs or color grading uh, LUTs means lookup table it's, it's a way of sort of replacing different colors here's some footage and it's kind of you know some rocks next to some water could we recolor this in some way and the answer is absolutely you just click on color now with all of this this is our preview window we can literally just you know change the color temperature change the tint change exposure all individually and if you click on these we reset them to normal but we have these things called LUTs which are sort of preset things to make things change into uh, certain colors and you know we can go mono black and white vivid quite like warm for grass but not so good here cool loads of stuff you can literally play your heart's content looking at what is going to suit your footage wow that is bizarro um, and obviously from there you can then mess about with that some more you can change the intensity of the LUT so you're happy with it and obviously if you want to base it on a particular point in time then uh, go ahead get your base reference and then decide what you want and there's there is a lot there's even one for the sea some of them look a bit weird some of them look different and you know it's it's going to be about individually tailing this to, to what you want bring the sats down make it like it's night time do whatever you like I don't mess with color very often because I I'm kind of like this this is what it looks like I don't like to mess with with what's being shown because I'm, I'm trying to sort of show the raw stuff but of course if you want to do more cinematic stuff these are the sort of things you should certainly consider playing with uh, quite like low light as well it's all very different um, and again with all these things nothing happens until you click apply so you can come around play with this and you can say actually no I like the original better or yeah I I quite like that warmer color but hey that's a little bit oversaturated so I just bring that down a bit now it looks worse <laughs> bring the temperature oh, I'm not very good at color but yeah until you click apply nothing happens but as soon as you do click apply that that is in there but if you wanted to change it again just go back into it and say give me none and you're back to the original footage and you can reapply that and and you're good to go again okay let's say we've gone ahead and we've made our epic drone video of various in this case weird looking things put together um, what about other things what about like things like titles and music tracks and things like that or perhaps you want to do a voiceover I mean voiceover is pretty easy you can just hit that record button and uh, yeah let's access my microphone and I can start talking and I can record here using my built-in microphone because I'm already using 
my other microphone to do this voiceover. And then you'll see that appears here and we can obviously put that where we want to be uh, and do stuff like that or we can go ahead what I did is I went to YouTube if you go to YouTube um, audio library you will find a whole bunch of stuff that you can use and no attributions required there's lots of different sites that will give you access to royalty free music but don't worry too much about using commercial music either as long as you're not aiming to monetize your videos most of the cases if you're using a licensed track from you know a well-known band or something it'd just be the case that uh, youtube will tell you that that matches uh, a licensed track and it's not available for monetization very very rarely will you get asked to remove it it's only if it's not licensed in certain countries anyway let's grab this track and uh bring it on down in our audio layer here and if we then play that at some point we've got nice bits of uh, audio and what I might do is if I listen to this it's like there's obvious points what I like to do is change the edit point of the music where it sort of has that natural beat there so if we start that up again and it sort of goes with it if you like and we can do the same thing again there no longer goes with the music at all does it anyway that is basically adding music I'm just gonna get rid of that because a I don't know how much you can hear of it because I'm on an external microphone here and B you're not really gonna be able to hear me because I want to talk as well about adding titles possibly you're just like you know a a big old title that you just want at the start of your video so people know it's you and that's pretty easy to do you can edit the text and say epic drone video and you see you know there's different ways of doing uh, bits and pieces and we can you know flat color or gradients and then we can change the the start color and the end color to completely different and weird things should we want to and arrange the gradient in a different way scale things differently and let's have a text border of this is going to look awful orange of course oh yes now we're getting there blur that and it just sort of looks like that and then we can apply oh I say we can apply that we've also got animation so at the moment it just sort of uh, what does it do it sort of pops in like that so we can have it pop in like that for example if we want to all these things are possible lots of possibilities and if we then look at this it pops up from there and we can tailor our animation um, where it's going to be if we want to move that around I would like to see that a bit bigger edit this and make it bigger could certainly do with being the same uh, sort of size in the editor than it, than it was here because if I, if I went in and edited it here it would look like this because the uh, that title's not big enough and it's still not big enough hmm I'm gonna feed that back to them that does not look like the end screen but yeah you get the gist you can do titles and perhaps halfway through you you might you know want to do other things lots of people put in little things in sort of the sort of subtitle category and say things like I almost crashed here and then as you play it you oh god that's too small isn't it oh that's the problem there we're using too small a, a font I almost crashed here and then you can obviously drag that around and arrange it as you want to so it's fine me just showing you some of these things but what I went and did is took some of those footage pieces I had and I put the music in and the titles and uh, a couple of extra bits one one of the bits I did was like a multiple overlay here in order to get like um, multiple bits across the screen 
and you can zoom in on this timeline by the way just with, with that so you can get a better idea of what you've got so we got multiple um fades and and gubbins like that and i thought what i'll do is i'll put this on the video as a proper like 4k track so you can kind of see what we get here and when you want to finalize what you do here what you have to click is this export button uh, and that'll say uh, we're going to export this uh, as mp4 which is very you know the, the normal one uh, mkv file which is generally h265 is going to be much smaller but take a lot more processing time so mp4 is good we've got it as high it's uh, h264 at 60 frames a second we're in 4k as you see here so let's go ahead and say start that task and it will take probably around what's it saying here two and a bit minutes and this is for a 40 second clip so it's doing about 29 frames a second basically so what it's doing is taking all these different clips and assembling them properly into something so what I'm going to do is stop talking and I'm going to show you the final output of that 40 second clip using some of the techniques I showed you earlier on I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah, yeah Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up on my... Now, having gone and made this edit I wanted to point out a, a couple of things which I didn't like And they're all to do with essentially the subtitles And I was thinking that the problem here was you could only do one animation at a time so if I'm creating titles here I have um, one thing here saying um, I want to fade in and if I edit the text you see in the animation it, it does a fade in but I also wanted that to fade out again so what I ended up doing here is um, doing a title copying it over and on this particular title I set that to fade out and that gives me um, a sort of fade in fade out and I mentioned this to the guys over at uh, VideoProc and, and told them about like how I didn't like the fact that when I edited stuff that the size of the title didn't reflect um, the size as it appeared on the screen here and that I'd like two animation types. And uh, aside from mentioning, uh, you know, there are things that could be improved, they also pointed out this icon, which I hadn't really looked at before, which is actually a much better way of doing this instead of subtitles. So I thought I'd just mention this quickly, but I wanted to leave in me getting it wrong, because often in these sort of applications, you know, the first time you do it is not going to be the workflow you end up with. You, you find out little tips and tricks along the way. And for this sort of thing, doing titles, if you click on this, it's still a little bit quirky. Uh, let's just replicate what we had here. So if we go into here, I'll choose my impact and I'll center that text and let's say I want to set it to 196. What's a little bit strange about it and what I'll do just before I do that, I'll do the normal thing about having a shadow color of black and that shadow should be down there and the offsets a little bit like that. Um, yeah, what was weird about this is the way you can actually change the size of the text by doing this so rather than putting in like a much bigger um, font size you simply sort of drag the thing about and so we'd have that kind of in the middle here and you know we'd change that to epic drone video if I can spell video and then crucially here it's got both ends of the animation so we can have fade in coming in and we can have fade out coming out that way and then how long is this this is a whopping five seconds so if we can change that to sort of four seconds and apply that and I'm just gonna mute the sound here so you don't have to listen to that and then instead of my slightly more complicated one we should just be able to go on and say epic drone video nice fade in epic drone video fade out actually that 
obviously the fade in fade out um, things are all changeable so it didn't stay on the screen very long did it so let's change that to a second like so do that one more time fade in stay there a couple of seconds fade back out again so that is the much easier way of doing that instead of doing two you're just doing one and that's using the text tool so I learned something today as well so that's a little taste of the basics of using vlogger and some things you can do with it and how they sort of go into edits of uh, drone videos of course there's a bunch more uh, effects and other clever stuff one of which is motion animation where you can sort of uh, fake camera panning for example by animating a, a sort of section of the screen and moving it across uh, there's all sorts of compositing effects so you could use stuff like green screen and things there was one that might be more relevant to uh, drones that I didn't include it because I figured this video is already long enough and I kind of liked the view I had and that's um, lens correction so if you got specifically um, a sort of GoPro and you put it on the widest angle you can get a, the, the fish eyeing effect so you, you see the sort of the the horizon sort of curve out and you can correct that either manually or just by having a drop down saying I'm using a GoPro 7 and I was filming in super view and this is what it looks like but I was quite happy with my stuff but what you also have is a bunch of video and written tutorials both on the video proc site and their uh, YouTube channel so some of the effects you might want to do and not sure how to you can find them there as I said before it's not the only free video editor out there but it is fairly simple to pick up and one of the other reasons it might be more applicable to yourself is the fact that this has a very small footprint both in terms of the download size which is small and the amount of memory it takes you can actually run this with quite a, a small amount of memory um, and disk space which means you don't need a high-end system to do your video editing obviously the more memory and resources the better and if, especially if you're dealing with very high resolution stuff like 4k 8k that's going to be very useful but um, in, in quite a moderate system or a laptop you'll find this is absolutely fine to edit with um, which is something you can't say of, of all videos editing software because a lot of it takes an awful lot of uh, uh, memory and resources and then I mentioned it's free so if you haven't got a video editor at the moment and you're uploading raw stuff complete with like pictures of you looking up your nose at the camera and uh, all the sounds on it at least get something to you know trim the edges bring the sound down put a title in uh, this is a fairly good place to start of course you've got nothing to lose by trying it um, it works on loads of versions of Windows and Mac just go download it and give it a shot of course if you do download it please use the link down below because at least that tells Videoproc how many people watch this video and then checked out the product if you do give it a try and you've got any feedback good or bad please pop it in a comment down below because it really helps out other people that are, are thinking of using it and, and want to get some feedback and it also of course helps out Videoproc because they get to look at these comments and they understand what's good about it and what they need to improve on and they can really use that information. Well, I hope that video has been helpful and I, I really hope everybody at least gives some sort of video editing a go when they're putting their drone videos together. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.